in patients who uh, come to the emergency department and have a benign inner ear condition, like benign positional vertigo, you can treat them with uh, what are called canalith repositioning maneuvers, which are just physical maneuvers at the bedside that take the rocks, if you will, the small crystals in the head that have fallen into the wrong place and essentially literally move them so that they fall back out and then patients cease being symptomatic. So we can actually treat and effectively cure uh, those patients on the spot. Uh, patients who have uh, what's called vestibular neuritis, which is uh, the other common condition seen in the emergency department in patients presenting dizziness and vertigo, uh, is generally treated with a combination of sedative medications to kind of tamp down the vertigo symptoms as well as um, steroids, although that remains controversial, the extent to which that, that helps uh, <coughs> clinical symptomatology in the long run, but it's been shown to improve functional recovery from a physiologic standpoint. And then obviously for patients with acute stroke, those are patients who need to be emergently managed. If they're seen early enough, they can receive the same acute thrombolytic stroke treatments that uh, patients uh, with other types of strokes would get. Uh, and in those who have um, high-risk lesions where they could progress to a, a worsening stroke, uh, we uh, obviously want to apply early secondary prophylaxis to prevent a, a, a progression of the stroke to something more serious. Well, from a diagnostic standpoint, that's really where we've been uh, focusing is on, <clears throat> since we know what, for the most part, what the right treatments are for these groups of patients, we really need to focus on getting the right diagnosis in these patients. So what we've been working on is uh, leveraging new technology to uh, <clears throat> triage patients into high and low risk categories. So what we're using are a set of uh, video oculography uh, goggles, which are uh, they look a little bit like a set of swim goggles without the lenses. They have a, a camera in the frame and a, an accelerometer in the frame that measures head and eye position. We're able to track the relative eye and head motion, which allows us to assess the vestibular system non-invasively. And we're able to do this sort of portably at the bedside in the emergency department. And we're actually just now starting a phase two clinical trial uh, called AVERT that's uh, sponsored by the National Institute for Deafness and Communication Disorders at NIH. And that, uh, that study is going to compare current standard of care for diagnosing patients with acute dizziness and vertigo to uh, a novel diagnostic strategy that leverages the video oculography goggles to um, <coughs> triage people into high and low risk categories, much the same way you would use an EKG to triage chest pain. So as a chest pain patient would get a physiologic assessment of their heart rhythm and their, their heart uh, physiology waves to detect whether they have a heart attack or not, we would do the same thing in a patient with dizziness, look at the physiology of their eye movements to detect whether they have a stroke or not. This is something that um, is, it, the device itself is FDA approved, but the, the, the method and the process of, of doing this is not something that's in routine clinical practice yet. Uh, in selected centers, people are using this on a, uh, but generally only in the hands of uh, people who are expert in eye movement disorders. But we expect that over the course of the next five to 10 years, this will become the standard of care in uh, medical practice in emergency departments around the world. It's likely that uh, these kinds of uh, devices are going to be used, at least at first, by neurologists. Uh, but it may well be that uh, quickly they transition into also being used by uh, emergency care providers. So for instance, uh, either emergency physicians, uh, much the same way originally when e electrocardiograms were used entirely by cardiologists and interpreted entirely by cardiologists, and then there was sort of a transition to where they were secondarily doing backup reading, but eventually it sort of became common practice for non-specialists to do it. I think that's the same kind of transition we can look forward to here. I think initially stroke doctors will be the ones assisting in uh, applying these technologies and, and, and leveraging them to uh, diagnose acute stroke in patients in the emergency department, and then eventually it'll transition more to frontline care providers, including perhaps EMTs and ambulances and so on and so forth.